Hi, this is Vicki Gilford Parnell, and I would like to share another dream with you. This is a dream that our lovely Jesus gave me on 5-31-22, and I journaled it at 1.06 a.m., um, and actually I dreamed, dreamed it first at that time and woke up, and then I had prayed, and, and it's in the entry here, and asked the Lord if this is truly from you. Let me dream it again with more detail. And then more detail came. So before I um, share this dream with you, I would like to ask everybody to pray. Pray that the Lord would give you um, eyes of discernment to know the truth, to line it up with the Word of God. I'm not asking you to take my word about these things. I'm asking you to take them to the Lord. Take them to our lovely Jesus. And be willing to see the truth there's a lot of things coming that I mean I if I had not been praying and seeking the Lord it would have been hard for me to to understand because we're in the time of the great delusion and doctrines of devils Father God I come to you Lord in the name of Jesus for there is no other name wherein we can be saved Father, I seek your will in all things, and I pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I bind every demonic force from hell, every assignment, every gin, every plot, every snare, every device, every scheme, every arrow, every dart, every hex, every vex, every curse, every person that would rise up and stand against not only me, your daughter, but against your other daughters and sons that... that are trying to preach your word, share their vision, share their dreams, whatever the call, Lord. I ask that you would just send back the forces of Satan. I bind you, you demonic forces. I bind you in everlasting chains that cannot be removed. And I cast you into outer darkness where you will be held in reservement there until the day of judgment in Jesus' name. And I loose, I loose all heaven to come down and to aid and to help us, Lord, to help us get these words to go forth. You said your word would not return into you void, but would accomplish all that you have set it out to do. And Father, that's what I'm asking. Take it on the four corners of the wind, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, wherever it needs to go, give us ears to hear, eyes to see with discernment, and a heart to receive, soften our hearts to receive your truth, Lord, in all things. And I give you praise, Father God. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Holy Spirit, in all things. In Jesus' name I pray and ask this. Amen. Okay, this is a dream. Whew, left me waking up with my heart beating. It is called, the title the Lord gave me, Here Comes the Giant's Dream. And again, it was on 5-31-22. And I first journaled it at 1.06 a.m. And today is actually 7 7 I awoke with my heart pounding, my body soaked in sweat, and in horror, this dream I had. I was on an unknown island, a place of safety with other people. I remember thinking we had chosen this island because of its obscurity and location. In this dream, bands of groups of people had come to hide here. But I'm not sure how they knew where we, we were or learned about our little island. For some reason, we had built massive walls around what I could call a village city. I am myself in this dream, wearing blue jeans, white tennis shoes with pink trim, and a red short sleeve blouse. I find that writing as the Holy Spirit leads me and instructs me, he has caused my heavy breathing to normalize. We have a man in this dream who is our group leader, a man whose love for people had caused him to rise up and take this position. I say this as I watch in this dream as he would look after the elderly with special care as well as the children. I found that he was bold, stern, yet compassionate. He was of medium build, having light brown hair with gray making its appearance slightly in it, also in his sideburns and his mustache, but more so it could be seen in his grizzly type beard. 
Whether he was married and had a family, it was never made clear to me in this dream. But we were preparing ourselves while praying to our lovely Jesus that it wouldn't happen here. The walls around our little city, by the way it is made of concrete with bars, steel, black bars, reinforcement in every few feet. How the walls came to be made or if they were here prior, I have no knowledge of that, but they are so very, very tall. The women who had no husbands or boyfriends were placed in different buildings and I was placed into one with four other women, with two of them being my daughter and the lady that my daughter lives with right now in order to help raise this lady, her friend's granddaughter, who wasn't in the stream that I can recall. The room was set up in an odd arrangement with my twin size bed turned horizontally as well as another beside me on the left side of the room with the three other twin size beds arranged vertically to the right of our beds. The other lady and I each have large size chest type trunks, which I know is where what few items of belongings we possessed were kept. The, a few feet from the foot of our beds is my daughter's cot. This is right after the chest, her vertical sitting bed. It was the nearest one to our horizontal beds with their friends next in line and the other lady's bed at the very end. On the front wall when looking into the room sitting below my daughter's and her friend's vertical beds are located two upright chests. To the far right beside my daughter's friend's upright chest is the door. The other lady's vertical bed sitting farthest to the right has a chest type trunk to the right of her bed placed up against the wall. I see many people of all ages and races when I go outside. All seem to have an assigned task or duties and everyone had their part to play in helping our village city survive. I knew in this dream that I would get up earlier than needed to perform my task so I could spend time with my lovely Jesus. We were all about our various chores on another warm, soon to be hot day when I saw a commotion to the right near the leader's residence. Inside his little building was located a lot of our supplies, necessities, and electronic equipment. We did have electricity in this village city, but I'm not sure what kind of system it was that was in place for it either. Upon hearing the commotion, I had looked up from where I was working and tending one of our gardens along with other people assigned to the task with me. The door of the latest home was open and many of the strong men of our group and these those who assisted our leader is helping to those who assist our leader in helping to protect our village city and assure it ran smoothly had gathered around it. I heard excited voices and the state of them had all become agitated. I began praying, lovely Jesus, what is it? Because the hairs of my arms are standing on up with a sense of danger. Pray, my daughter, pray, for they are coming. They're on their way. They are already upon you. Who, Jesus, I asked urgently. Who has found us? But he did not reply. I fell on my knees in the little garden and began crying out and interceding as I prayed in tongues. Some of the other people must have felt the physical danger also and had been warned by our lovely Jesus also that something was coming because more had immediately stopped their task and had begun praying in their various ways. Some standing some walking, while others like me had hit their knees. I heard people running, so I looked up, tears still wetting my face, and I see the men have grabbed what few weapons they had brought and were positioning themselves at various locations. Several of the men also running began sounding the alarm. Their words caused my blood to run cold and the color to drain from my face.
giants are coming. Take cover. The giants are here. Oh, Jesus, help us. We had heard of the brutalness and cruelty of the giants and had seen the horrible remains of cities that had been destroyed by them. Jesus, I cried out. I'm here, daughter of faith, of grace, of mercy, and of understanding. Now run, run and hide. Follow Holy Spirit's leading. I jumped up and took off running. As I did, I heard heavy, thudding sounds that I felt might be footsteps. I turned my head to look backwards, but never stopped running. There, to my horror, is a giant that is now standing in front of our concrete and steel wall. I see him from the top of his chest up. He had only a little hair on his head which had blotchy purple type spots on the bald parts of his head. His features looked that of a human, but the evil cruelty in his eyes made me run even faster. My heart is pounding. My breathing is heavy and fast as I prayed. Jesus, give me wings and speed. I hear a bellow of rage followed by other voices, so now I feel there's more than one giant at our wall. But I'm not looking anymore. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where do I hide? As I feel a sweet presence engulf me, I heard sounds like blows upon the wall. Then I heard loud cracking and crumbling sounds as the wall gave way. They're in. Oh, Jesus, help. Help us. And then I awoke. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, help us. Help our world. If this is from you, a warning from you that the giants, the Nephilim, are coming, then please, please let me know some way. Even though it is a horrible dream, if this is from you, then Jesus, in your name, let me dream it again with more detail. I'm going to pray, sweet, lovely Jesus, as I feel you're calling me to do. And then, Lord willing, I will try to sleep some more, if it's your will for me. Sweet Jesus, please help us. My heart is pounding and racing so fast in my chest. My breathing is in short gasps. For I did so dream the same dream about horrifying giants, the Nephilim. And they were declared in this dream as part of the judgment passed upon our ungodly world and nation. Before I write this down, I'm coming to pray. Oh, Jesus, please, please help us. Help our world. Windows and doors of opportunity for salvation. I'm here, Jesus. I'm here to pray. Jesus, my love, I dreamed the same dream as the first time. But when I heard the cracking sound of the concrete bursting and it crumbling to the ground, it shook me so hard that I stumbled over the rock in the dirt and hit the ground face downward. I cried out, Jesus, help me. Get up. Get up, daughter of faith, of grace, of mercy, and of understanding. Get up. I started picking myself up, and as I did, I heard a roaring sound from the direction of the crumbled wall. I involuntarily turned my head. Oh, dear Jesus, there's three of them, all men, but one apparently hor appears horribly deformed with two left arms and one small withered arm on his right arm, but it didn't keep him from carrying a club with spikes on it. His top left hand had what looked like a huge metal hammer, and he was hitting the parts of the wall still standing of the still standing concrete walls with its black metal rod still sticking up at the top from where they had been built inside of the wall. He had a very large nose nose and a long dirty and long dirty matted brown hair plus a scr long scraggly beard and shaggy mustache. He had bushy eyebrows and a scar that runs across his face from his top right eye I, to, from his top right eyebrow that passed through his eyelid and down his face at an angle cutting across his nose also it has left his eye with instead of an iris and pupil a white spot it looked like he had been sliced across the face with something sharp oh Jesus he looked so mean 
I hear another sound of something making impact from the now easily crumbling concrete wall. It's the other giant. His hair looks like a dirty dull green. His eyes, oh Jesus, he has three eyes straight across his face and the one on the far left looks like it's some type of electronic eye. He is angry and I am on my feet running again screaming inside my head. Holy Spirit, which way in Jesus' name? Immediately, I heard his soft, sweet, urgent voice say, To your left, and drop to the ground. I did as he said. Now what? I cried inside my head, for fear of being overheard. People are screaming and running. Shots are being fired. Daughter, daughter of God Most High, wedge yourself beneath the bush and as far under the porch as you can. I began crawling under the tree and covered myself the best I could, but I could still see what's going on. I wish though in this dream, I couldn't. I see the giants. These Nephilim are destroying everything in sight. Excuse me, sorry. Another helicopter going by. Jesus, Jesus help me. Thank you for the water. I began cr crawling under the tree and covered myself the best I could, but I could still see what, what's going on. I wished on this dream I couldn't. I see the giants. These Nephilim are destroying everything in sight. I watch as with little regard to human life, they pick up people, killing them in various ways, including eating part of some. The carnage is horrible. Jesus, Jesus, I whispered urgently. Will they find me? He replied immediately. Yes, my daughter of faith, of grace, of mercy, and of understanding, you will be found. Oh, Jesus, no, I strangled out in a shaky voice. Then why am I hiding here? Because, my little daughter, it is those not hidden that they shall seek to destroy until the rage subsides. I hear gunfire again. This time, I hear return fire. What was that, Jesus? I ask in shock. I peeked out from under the bush to get a better view. I see soldiers. Human-sized soldiers. All dressed in a blue uniform of cornflower blue. They're all different types of nationality I see in this large army of soldiers of both men and women. They all had dark hats on, possibly dark gray or black hats with bills, but not like a baseball cap. They are heavily armed and have square patches on both arms. The patches are white with cornflower blue and gray writing. But on each solar soldier is a device attached to the left eye of the men and on the right of the women. And it has a dull gray coil top wire running from the side of each device and goes into the top of them on their head on whichever side the device was located on. They had waited until the giants had cleared the way by taking down the concrete and steel wall and then waited until most of the giants were no longer destroying everything in a demonic rage. Spread out, I hear a man yell, and the soldiers begin dispersing in various directions. Oh Jesus, please help me. Suddenly, I felt someone grab my leg, and I was forcibly yanked out from under the bush and porch. The force was so hard, I felt pain in my bare arms below my short sleeves and my red blouse, as my arms became scraped by the rocks and dirt. No, I screamed out. I have been found. I am roughly stood up, and a man and a woman soldier are looking at me with guns raised. You will follow us, the woman said in a flat, even tone. I was taken with the other captives as we formed a small group of a handful of remaining people in our village, our village city. Then I heard these words from the heavens, such as for death to death, such as for sword to sword, such as for captivity to captivity, and such as for famine to famine, because thou, O nation of America, have failed to return to me, your creator. 
I looked frantically around to see if I could see my daughter or her friend. There they are. Thank you, Jesus, I said to myself. They looked visibly shaken and frightened, but unharmed. Both appeared to be in a state of obvious dishevelment. They were standing on the right in another group that had been rounded up by these soldiers. As one of the soldiers turned slightly to his side, I could read part of the writing on his arm patch. It says, One World Peacekeeper Units. A highly decorated soldier with various medals displayed proudly upon his chest now entered through the now broken down wall. He came to an abrupt stop in front of our two groups. Upon walking up, all the soldiers, every one of them, turned in perfect unison until they were standing together saluting this man. They seemed more robotic in their movements than a real person. He began addressing our groups. I couldn't help but notice even the giants had laid aside their dinner when this man entered, but they didn't stand to attention before him like the soldiers I see before me. Now you were right in your choice not to resist. Who has the orb? The orb of power. The orb. The orb of power? What orb of power, I thought to myself. A soldier came up to the man, saluted the officer, and said, General Marshal, sir, it's nowhere to be found. A General Marshal's face became angry and distorted. You will tell me where this orb is, or I will start shooting one person every five minutes. The sound of frightened cries and exclamations could be heard throughout the groups of captives. I began praying and asking my lovely Jesus, what is the orb of power? And where is it? Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. It's so good. One man spoke up in a frightened voice, his eyes upon a giant momentarily. Then he cast them back to the soldiers, and he said, We don't know what the orb of power is. A general marshal looked at him thoughtfully for a minute and said, that is a possibility, for most do not know what it is. But that is not what I'm asking. And like lightning, he pulled out his laser-type weapon and shot the man. He fell to the ground dead. Jesus. I heard a woman scream, Not Arnold! Oh no! But one look from the general marshal silenced her immediately while tears flowed from her eyes. Jesus, what is the orb of power? I'm sorry, people. That is not the sun that is on my screen that I am seeing. That is a heavenly presence. Praise your Lord. Daughter of faith, of grace, and of mercy, and understanding. It is technology of the fallen ones, encased in a silver egg-shaped orb. Where is it? It is hidden, daughter, by she who is your daughter's friend. I cast my eyes over at my daughter's direction, and I could see that she was sweating profusely. Thank you, Lord. The orb of power, if you please. The general marshal said out loud as he raised his gun and pointed it to a young lady who began crying but was afraid to move. Jesus, Jesus, Holy Spirit, what do I do? I will show you where it's hidden. When I heard his soft yet strong voice speak to me, those words I yelled out, Wait! The general marshal lowered his gun and the girl sighed heavily, trembling, still in fear. He turned to me and said, So you have the orb of power? No. No, I do not. But my God will show me where it is. Man's eyebrows nar no, excuse me, eyes narrowed, and then he said, There is no God, but he who sits on the throne in Jerusalem, our Savior of our new world system. He's not my God, I replied. 
Jesus is. The man's eyes narrowed, and he stood staring at me for a brief moment and then said, You serve the Nazarene? Yes. Yes, I do. You believe he will show you where the orb of power is at so these people don't have to die? Yes. Yes, I do. You Jesus believers have been known many times to know things from this being you call your God. How do I know that you aren't the one who originally liberated it from our facility? You don't, but if you let me pray to my God in Jesus' name, then His Holy Spirit will lead me somehow to where it's at. I will play your little game. It amuses me. But if you don't find it, then I will feed you and everyone here to my colleagues, and you will be the last to be eaten. This way, excuse me, you can witness what happens at the hands of a Nephilim. I couldn't keep myself from shuddering at what I just heard, and the general marshal noticed, and an evil grin spread across his face. I looked briefly around our captive groups, and I could tell how, tell those who also knew my lovely Jesus were praying under their breath more fervently. Holy Spirit, help us, I said. I looked back at the general marshal, who nodded his head, and he said, You have two minutes to pray to your God, and when the two minutes are up, you will lead my soldiers to the location of the Orb of Power. I nodded my head slightly, and the general marshal yelled, Time! A soldier to the right, near the end, yelled back, 11.58, without even looking at a clock. I immediately began praying urgently to my lovely Jesus to please reveal to me where it's hidden. Please, Holy Spirit, lead me. Deuteronomy 7, 9 calls you the faithful God. I trust you, Jesus. You cannot fail. You said in your holy word in Luke 18, 7, There's nothing secret that shall not be made manifest, or anything hid that shall not be known. Jesus, this is a need. Please reveal this to me for the people's sake. Follow Holy Spirit, my daughter, and He will take you to it. Thank you, Jesus. Time! I heard the general marshal yell out. The same soldier responded, 11.59 and 57 seconds. Your time is up. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, where is the orb of power, the great orb of technology? Lord, I give you praise. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing. But I see angelic presence. I see like what I saw at Moravian Falls. I do apologize. I just, I, I give you praise. I feel the presence all around me. Holy Spirit is going. Now where is the orb of power, the great orb of technology? Holy Spirit is going to lead me to it. I said with more confidence than I was feeling. But I knew that Jesus will not let us down because he is a God of love, pure love. I looked up at my daughter's direction and I saw she was crying as she tried to pray. Her friend stood beside her still sweating profusely, but her head was dropped as if in shame or at least it felt this way in this dream. She looked up and made eye contact with me and then she looked away quickly, but I saw much in her eyes. I saw fear, anger, shame, and regret all in this brief moment. I looked back toward the general marshal and said, I will now lead you with the Holy Spirit's help in Jesus' name to your orb. The general marshal snapped his fingers on his right hand and raised his hand and raised his hand widespread, opened, and five soldiers dispatched themselves from the army of soldiers still standing at attention, except for the one saluting. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Go with her. 
The five soldiers were four men and one woman. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. They raised their weapons in my direction. You will now take them to our orb of power. Our leader was very displeased to find it had been taken, for within it lies the technology to stabilize the atmosphere to where it's still breathable. It will, need, it will be needed soon because the hole has begun enlarging itself and apparently is unable to be contained on the stratosphere. He gave a quick nod of his head and one of the soldiers waved his laser gun indicating I should start moving. I stepped forward cautiously. Which way, Jesus? Holy Spirit, I felt a strong pull to go to my right. Holy Spirit, to the right? I asked him underneath my breath. Yes, daughter of faith, of grace, of mercy, and of understanding. I start walking toward the right side of the village city, which led to where most of the sleeping quarters were located. Which one, Holy Spirit, I ask out loud, no longer trying to be unheard. Your quarters, daughter, in your quarters. I walked toward the direction of our sleeping quarters. The five guards behind me remained expressionless. When the soldiers following realized the location of my direction, my direction was leading us to one of the men finally spoke up. Hold on. I stopped immediately. What now, Jesus? I asked slowly under my breath. Trust me, daughter. Trust me. One of the soldiers walked toward our small, quickly built quarters and opened the door and looked in. Clear, he yells out loud. You may proceed. The woman soldier said in a monotone voice, Lord Jesus, are they even still human? I ask under my breath, not much, daughter of faith, of grace, of mercy, and understanding. They are being controlled by the direct link access to the AI systems which the man of sin controls. The soldier who had checked to see if anyone was inside the sleeping quarters building opened the door for me and I walked into the dimly lit room. Where, Holy Spirit, I asked as I slowly walked around the room. Update requested, I hear one of the soldiers say to the other four. The lady soldier responded and said, General Marshal, sir, subject is walking around the room as if waiting for something. She paused for a moment as if receiving a response somehow. Proceed, I heard her command me. Jesus, Holy Spirit, I really need an answer now. Jesus, daughter, where is your faith? I have never once been late, but in fact, I am always right on time. Forgive me, Jesus. Yes, you are, I replied, trying to accept this rebuke of love graciously while still praying to know where the orbit technology of power was hidden. Thank you, daughter. Who do you know had knowledge of it? My daughter's friend, I exclaimed. Then run to her bed. I searched it thoroughly, tearing the covers off and tossing them onto the floor. No orb. No orb. I looked around the room, asking the Holy Spirit to show me. Then the thought entered my mind. Her chest. The upright chest she had been assigned for her items to be stored in. The upright chest had been bolted to the wall, which I had felt was strange. But when I asked the leader, he said it was to keep them from being removed from the room since furniture was limited. Yet the chest type storage boxes had not been bolted to the floor. I ran over to the chest that had my daughter's friend's possessions in it and I began searching through her clothes and other items. Nothing. It has to be here, I exclaimed. One of the soldiers raised his weapon and pointed it directly at me as if he didn't like what I had just exclaimed. Oh, Jesus, I need you to show up now daughter pull the items out of the chest drawer and do it quickly the general marshal is about to call to get an update 
I stood frankly pulling out my daughter's friend's clothes and other items until nothing else remained. All four drawers were empty. I don't see anything. Holy Spirit, examine it closely, daughter, inside. Near the chest back wall in the wood is a knot. In a knot is the push button that accesses a hidden panel. Inside you will find the orb of power. I began looking fervently. One of the other male soldiers seemed to understand what I was looking for and was heading in my direction. Hurry, daughter, hurry. The second drawer location. I looked into the area where the second drawer location was at. There it is, I exclaimed, spotting the knot near the far left back. I tried pushing the knot, but it wouldn't open. I felt two arms grab me by my arms and shove me roughly to the left. The soldier takes his hand balls it up into a fist and smashes the back wall of the chest. I heard words splintering and I raised my hands to shield my eyes and face. The splinted wood revealed a hollowed out area of about a six by seven inch rectangle. There sitting on this hollow space on the base of the opening was a small locked box. The soldier reached in and grabbed the strong box with its strange lock. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. I begin fervently. Oh, I'm sorry. Sir, we've got it, I heard him say. I never saw any type of radio or communications device. And I felt that what they spoke somehow was relayed to whoever their devices on their heads were connected to. I didn't hear the responses the soldiers received, but one of the other male soldiers, a fair-skinned, blonde-headed man that reminded me of the fair people of the Scandinavian countries, grabbed me by my left arm and without a word half-dragged me with the other soldiers back to the general marshal's evil's presence. A look of triumph was in his eyes. He took the box from the soldier who had been carrying it while the soldier pulling me shoved me back into the group that I had been prior to looking for the orb of power. He looked at the box carefully to see if the box had been forced open. There was no sign of it having been opened. Next he looked at me and grinned as he produced an odd shaped key out from his pocket that when I looked at it I saw the words that said Nephilim alloy. He opened the box with the strange key that's in put me in mind of a cork corkscrew. The lock gave a slight click and he then puts the key back into his right pocket while holding the box with his left. He opens the box, pulls out something that looks like it's wrapped in rose pink fabric that's possibly silk or satin and hands the box to a soldier who without a command being issued had stepped forward to receive the now empty box into his outstretched hands. Then I realized they didn't have to speak out loud because they were all connected to one another through the devices on their heads controlled by the AI computer system. He slowly unwrapped and removes the pink material and there in his hand was what looked like the egg-shaped, total, totally shiny, smooth object that we all now had to know had to be the orb of power of technology. It looked alien to me, like something out of a sci-fi movie. Jesus, I whispered questioningly. He responded softly. Fallen one's technology that which has been presented to your world in various means that would suggest it is from another realm, my spirit realm. This is demon technology, and it is the demons, the fallen ones, who shall decide your world, which shall deceive your world to accept them as friendly aliens who shall aid Antichrist, the man of lawlessness in his reign of terror on this world. And then I awoke. The verses that God gave me, Jeremiah 15, 2, Deuteronomy 7, 9, Luke 18, 7, and Philippians 4, 19. 
I ask you pray about all these things. Like I said, these are things that if I had not been seeking the Lord and praying for discernment and to see spiritually and to know not to be deceived, then I don't know if I would be able to believe these things. But I do. I do. I have seen many dreams that I've had come to pass. So I'm asking you to line these up with the Word of God. Pray about them. Earnestly pray about them. And ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. And be willing, be willing to accept whatever He shows you. Either through the Word, through confirmation, however the Lord leads to do that. Thank you. God bless. Stay under the blood. That is where I will be, Lord willing, with His help in Jesus' name.